Hello guys and welcome to a new Stud Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a preview of the Narodnus Lobo Dilechka Voishka, otherwise known as Nov. I tried. Um, it, which is a new division available in the upcoming Raid on Dravar Nemesis DLC. As a disclaimer, Eugen has given me free access to the DLC, so a big thanks to them. Also, please remember that this is a preview build, and therefore a lot of things are work in progress and subject to change. Uh, if you'd like to read the description on the right-hand side, feel free to pause and take a look. I'm going to jump in straight on in. So just a warn, a pre-warn, there are lots of pronunciations that I've been trying my best to learn uh, for this preview. Uh, we will see how it goes. <laughs> I'm sure I'll give you guys a laugh regardless. Let's jump into the recon tab. So first of all, we have our classic motorcycle, or motorcycle, uh, which is kind of bad because it's a 10-pointer that doesn't have a radio. It's actually even worse than normal. Yeah, I like the outfits though. Then we have the Izvichachi, I think it is. Um, these guys have four UDM42s, which makes them, you know, reasonably good at close range. I think the M42 has the same stats as the Thompson, where it's like got a hundred meter range, but its accuracy is quite high, so it still does a lot of damage at close range. So these could be pretty scary if you like bump into them at close range, but otherwise just your standard four man infantry squad. Nothing special in the transports, just the Fiat and the Spa, uh, which I believe don't have any markings on them, do they? No. All right, let's move on to the Sniper. These guys can come in the motorcycle. They can also come in the Fiat and they can come in the truck. They're just a standard two man Sniper squad. Nothing too special about them. Then the Auto Blender which is your classic 30-point auto cannon vehicle that the Falchimir often get. It's okay. It's pretty fast, and it's decent enough to take out light vehicles, but that's about it. It can rip through infantry very nicely, actually, and you can get six in phase A. So this is probably something that you're definitely going to be taking here. Then we have the Konyichki Izvichachi which is actually an awesome squad. These guys have four Beretta M38s, six M24s, and two Berettas. So at close range, they can fire all of their weapons because this is technically an automatic rifle, which means it can fire within the 100 meter range. They also have Molotovs. So you're going to have a lot of fire going down range. Like that is a solid, what, two... 3.2 damage just from the weapons plus the Molotov. These things are going to absolutely slap. And you can get three cards of them. And their availability is actually not terrible either. You get 5 in A, 10 in B, and 15 in C. They do get the exceptional stealth, which for a 12-man squad is pretty insane. And the very high optics there as well. So a very, very nice infantry squad. Let's move on to the infantry tab. So we have the Lovsi Denkova. These guys have an MP40, four Car 98s, and a boys AT rifle. So they're pretty much just a six-man AT rifle squad. That's all they're really good for. Um, the boys AT rifle is not that great, honestly. Uh, it has a 15 round per minute rate of fire. That fires actually pretty slowly for a, a anti-tank rifle. And availability isn't anything special either. So you get 6 in A, 12 in B, 18 in C. 15 points apiece. Probably be better off at 10. Then we have the Bombashi. These guys have 8 rifles and the HE. Now as throwaway close range infantry, these aren't terrible. You know, they're not great either. But, you know... They'll trade with other infantry that has HE or, you know, close range infantry. The issue you have with this squad compared to other squads that have HE is that they will die in one HE. So usually with like a pioneer squad, they have like 10 men and you throw a grenade and you can probably take a grenade and it will take your squad down to like 
two men or three men if you're lucky by taking a direct hit that is whereas this squad is a lot less likely to survive especially if it's moving so yeah I'm not entirely sure how effective these are going to be I haven't had a chance to test them rigorously but they're there as an option to supplement other infantry I think more than anything else they are fanatical so they don't they, they can't surrender and also they do have the raider traits so they can stay behind enemy lines without the uh, penalty towards uh, their suppression then we have the Borsi. These guys have MP40, 9 M24s, and the Zeb P30J Zorka machine gun. <laughs> uh, they're an 11-man squad, pretty much a standard sort of frontline squad. You can see that this is sort of the main line infantry of this unit because you get eight of them. Uh, like There's eight cards available. So you could fill your entire deck with these pretty much. Uh, actually, could you? Maybe one card short. But 12 in A, 24 in B, and 32 in C. So that's a lot of infantry. And they, the Raider trait's not bad. It does give them the very good stealth. Now we have the uh, Jurish Nidzi, which have the three Berettas, the Karkanos, and the Molotovs. So just a cheap 20 point Molotov squad which actually can do quite a bit of damage with the triple Beretta uh, once they make those units move with the Molotov the availability is okay 9, 18 and 27 uh, and they get the exceptional self from being a raider so yeah not too bad then we have the Commandia this is a 12 man leader squad they don't have radio unfortunately we got four Stens, eight Car 98s, and a Pia. It's a very lackluster commander, but it is cheap for what it offers. You know, a 20 point 12 man leader squad is actually, you know, pretty nice overall. It's just, I kind of wish it had smoke at least if it doesn't have radio, um, but it doesn't have either. So that's kind of where you're left. It's not going to really be able to defend itself too well because its weapons suck. Um, but moving on, we have the Kisanti. These guys have four MP4, or so, sorry, not MPs, M42s, and the nine car 98s. Again, fanatical, 13 man squads. Reasonably good availability. Th these will be kind of nice to accompany the other close range infantry. So if you had, say, one Kasanti squad, you had one Jurishnitsi and one Bombashi, then you could probably have the Kasanti be the one that initially engages and then move forwards your Bombashi and Jurishnitsi to, you know, get the the kill onto the enemy squad. So the Jurishnitsi would throw the Molotov, make the move, and then the Bombashi can throw their um, HE explosive and then it would like kill the enemy squad in one go, basically. So I feel like a lot of these are kind of there to be used together, and you're going to be like super infantry heavy on the ground uh, throughout this division. And then we have the Pioneeri. These guys have 15 car 98s or car 98s, M91 car cano, sorry, and three HE TNT. Availability on these is six, twelve, and eighteen, so it's not terrible. Uh, for a 15 man HE squad, 20 points, not bad. They are disheartened though. So, yeah, they're going to take suppression pretty fast. But in a close range environment where you're engaging at like the 100 meter range to use this TNT, that's not going to be too much of a problem. It's just at range, they're going to get forced back by machine guns very quickly. And then we have a card of Podoroshka. These guys are a seven man squad with five M24s and two Brens. Just kind of like a Bren group, really. Except seven men instead of five. They do have exceptional stealth, but pretty trash for the price, honestly. Not the best infantry in the world. Uh, then we have the Proletari, which are the, well, apparently commandos, but just like your standard infantry, uh, that more elite infantry than your standard uh, Borchi here. 
These guys have two M42s, seven M24s, the MG34, which is what makes a big difference, and then the Panzerfaust. They have the rated trait for the very good stealth as well, but the MG34 is like the main thing here. So these are going to be a lot better uh, than these, for example. Although technically, these Borchi can use their machine gun within 100 meter range and the proletariat cannot. So there's that. Then we have the SOE leader and the OSS leader, which are like the special operatives um, for the UK and America, which are basically just leaders in this case. Um, the British leader has a peer, it has radio, exceptional stealth, three Stens, three Lee Enfields. The OSS leader on the American one is actually kind of nice. It has the M42, uh, M3 carbine, and a 30 cal with the smoke grenades. And the fact it gives smoke and radio is, you know, a double whammy there. It's really nice. Really nice indeed. In terms of transports, nothing changes there. Transports are just trucks and jeeps and whatever. So there you go, that's the infantry tab. Tank tab. Not really much to see here, as you guys can see for yourselves. There is an R35 card, you can get 4 in A or 8 in B. There's an L6 card, which gives you 6 in A. And there's an S35 card, which gives you 6 in A. So you get all of your armor in A. The R35 is the small Hotchkiss, which has the 37mm gun on it. It's alright for taking out other light armor and half tracks, but that's about it. The L6 is good for taking on enemy infantry with its 20mm. It's basically the same as the Auto Blender uh, in terms of weapon and firepower. It just is a tank and moves a bit slower. Has a little bit more armor though. Uh, then the S35 is as good as it gets for this division. <laughs> 70 mils of penetration, 60 mils of frontal armor. You'd be lucky to take out a T like a T-34 or I guess a Panzer IV in this case um, with one of these. I guess you would actually be able to take a Panzer IV with, at close range with one of these. But yeah, not the most exciting tank tab, unfortunately. But I love the way that they all have these Yugoslavian markings. Very cool. Let's move on to the support tab. So we have the L35, L3, L, L335, which has the two Bredas. It's just the little machine gun tank. You can get five of these in phase A. Then there's the 45 millimeter short range mortar, which has 540 meter range. It's okay. I mean, I think 45 to 50 millimeter mortars in general do have a place in divisions like this where you're relying a lot on infantry because they can provide smoke very quickly and they can also provide fire support very quickly at shorter ranges so for example if you were to be using the Pioneer or you know something else at close range uh, that had like the Bombashi for example and you spotted a unit you could probably try and pin it down first uh, with a unit like this from a distance in the same tree line um, that's kind of where they come in handy but anyway six available in A, 12 in B, 18 in C. Then there is a machine gun team the Mitral Yeski. These guys have a Breda, it's really bad it's only got 0.5 damage, the suppression kind of sucks on these things so yeah Take it for what it is. 6, 12, and 20 is your availability. No nice transports in any of these, by the way. Uh, then we have the Partop. Now, this is an interesting weapon. This is work in progress, as you can see. It currently has 200 meter range, but it does 10 damage. Now, just for reference, a TNT does 5 damage. So this thing hits like a truck at 200 meter range it's just it's only a two strength squad so it's going to be very difficult to make use of these the the best use case i can see for these is in a town 
where you can hide these in like a back garden and then an enemy unit comes across it and you just blow them up like you just one shot them i don't know if it can actually one shot because technically the enemy unit would most likely be in in uh, light cover at least if it was in a town so i'm not sure if you'd actually get like the full kill uh but yeah i guess we'll we'll, we'll have to wait and see <laughs> uh three available in a six in b definitely a meme unit that could be really good fun to use but <laughs> maybe limited in its effectiveness and we have the 65 millimeter infantry gun uh, this isn't terrible. I mean, it's just a standard infantry gun, really. Uh, 1,500 meter range with 12 round per minute rate of fire. You get 40 shells. You know, it's not bad. 35 points, 4 available in A, 8 in B, and 12 in C. Yeah, standard infantry gun. Moving on, we have a card of the Shadak. These guys are actually decent. Fanatical MG42 squad actually pretty nice uh mg42s are great so yeah this is definitely a support team that you're going to want to consider moving on we have the supply trucks so in this case we get opal blitzes uh in phase a b and c you get two four and six so all pretty much standard with the ten thousand supply and then for commander choices we've got the commander on the motorcycle We've got the Commandant, which is the infantry variant, and then the Commandant in the Blinder, which is like a 2 2 2, pretty much. As the 20 mil. It's okay. Uh, the bad thing about this is the weak top armor. So, for like for an armored vehicle, as your commander, generally you're going to want better than weak top armor. Otherwise, you might as well just take the Commandant. And in this case, the Commandant is actually really good. Uh, because they are a 12-man squad uh, with radio, with raider trait. The raider trait is actually really useful here because it gives it the very good stealth, so it keeps itself hidden. Also, because it has 12 uh, men with the two ZKs, the rifle, and the breader, you're going to be able to do decent chunk of damage at close range as well to defend yourself. So, yeah, it's, a, it's actually a really nice commander squad. Moving on to the anti-tank, we have the... Solothurn, uh, I don't know what you call these, anti-tank rifles, <laughs> it's right there, um, the Solothurn anti-tank rifle squad, these guys are okay, like the Solothurn has decent like penetration, 40 mils of penetration, does only 2 damage though, does have 20 round per minute rate of fire with 60% accuracy, this is one of the better A2 rifles, so could definitely be worth thinking about, but the availability lets it down. Like only having like four on a card in phase A and then eight in B and twelve in C. Like it'd be nice if it was like six, twelve, and then like twenty, right? I think that'd just be better. Uh then we have the Jean Bull Jean Bullisti. <laughs> I'm gonna go with <laughs> which is a two man Piet squad. I mean Piet suck because fifty percent accuracy. There's a reason I have an exclamation mark Piet command on my Twitch channel, uh which always misses because that's what they do in game. Um the Piet is a very unreliable AT system. Uh then we have the Breda. I don't know if this is technically a Breda, but 47mm AT gun with 20 round per minute rate of fire, 65 mils of penetration. You're going to be able to kill, like, again, half tracks, light armor targets with this thing. It does also have HE, so it can chip enemy support weapons, but it will get through the ammo very quickly with the 20 round per minute rate of fire. So bear that in mind. Also, technically, it's 23 round per minute rate of fire with the base one veterancy, so it's firing even faster. But in a B and C, you got 6, 9, and 12 in availability. It's okay. Uh, then we have your standard pack 38, which only has AP shells. There's no APCR. You get six of those in phase A. And then there's the pack 40, which you get uh, APCR shells in this, actually, which is quite nice. Um, but these are available in A, B, and C, but you're forced to bring them in at one vet. 
and so your availability on these is actually pretty terrible um like two in a is fine but having three in b and four in c is actually kind of bad so there you go that's your at tab and to yeah tab we have the breader another breader <laughs> the 20 mil breader um with 35 mils of penetration can kill light armor targets and it can also um, rip aircraft out of the sky. I think the Breda is actually not too bad for like an AA system. You can get 6 in A, 9 in B, and 12 in C. It's not too bad, honestly. So, yeah. There you go. Then we have the Ha Top M28 75mm or 76.5mm. This thing looks whack. Like, the barrel on this thing is nuts. Like, what is that doing? <laughs> it's actually crazy. Uh, but regardless, it has um, pretty decent HE. So if it was, like, firing at ground targets, it looks like it would actually do a decent chunk of damage. Um, but otherwise, it's just kind of like your standard long-range anti-air. So there you go. 95 points. Looks kind of crazy. Uh, two available in A. 4 in B, 6 in C. Let's move on to the artillery tab, which is equally as exciting. <laughs> uh, this artillery tab is extremely weak. Uh, you get 75 mil howitzers with 8 round per minute rate of fire. I mean, the rate of fire is not that bad, and like the HE is not that bad. The bad thing is that you don't get radio. Right, there's no radio artillery here at all, uh, which is really, really bad. So I'm not sure how effective these are really going to be. You'd have to probably take these pretty close to get a decent dispersion. Or just have a lot of them, which I guess you technically can do. If you brought them all in phase C, you could have 18 of these things. There is also six cards of 81mm mortars. We've seen 81mm mortars a hundred times. These are basically the same. Just with a Yugoslavian crew. And then we have the 100 mil. Again, going to suffer because it doesn't have radio capability. But maybe if you fire at something long enough it will die. You actually get 35 heat rounds at the moment. It's kind of crazy. They only have 15% accuracy though. <laughs> That's... Uh, yeah... <laughs> Not something you're going to want to rely on. These can only be brought in phase A and B. And you've only got one card of them. So this might be what you'd bring in phase A. And then maybe you'd bring in these boys in B or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I am yet to work that out. Then finally we have the air tab. Now the air tab is actually kind of cool. Uh, there's some interesting units here. We have, first of all, the Bowfighter, which has the four 20 mils and the six 30 cows. It's your fighter variant one. So it's okay for shooting down bombers and stuff if it can catch up to them. And it's kind of okay at, like, head-onning aircraft, but it will lose a dogfight almost every time. Moving on, we have the Baltimore. It has four 227 kilogram bombs with the 425 kilometer per hour speed. Not bad. Standard bomber for 105 points. Does have the Greek markings, which is cool. Then there is the Hurricane Mark IV. Actually kind of a fan of these. I think they're pretty good. And you're probably going to be quite reliant on them uh, for your AT because... Obviously, you don't have very good tanks. You don't have a lot of AT, even though you have back 40s, right? The availability just sucks. So dealing with tanks is going to be very difficult, especially if you're like relying on Piats, for example. So the Hurricane is going to be super important, and you can get four of them in B and six of them in C, which is actually quite generous on the availability. So you're going to have plenty of these to use uh, throughout the game. Uh, then there's the Spitfire Mark V B Trop. Um, good old Spitfire. Can come in B and C um, with one vet. It has the 20mm Hispanos and the four 
30 cows in the wings. Gets the excellent agility. Very nice. Then there's the Ventura, which is an interesting bomber. Uh, looks pretty cool. Does have some 30, some 50 cows on it. It's got the two 50 cows on the top there. I'm not sure where the other 50 cows are. There's like the two 50 cows on the front. And then... Ah, there's 50 cows at the bottom here. So, yeah, I guess like it could probably do a decent chunk of damage to a fighter that's following it. But its payload is terrible. Um, it only has 16 45 kilogram bombs, <laughs> which is, yeah, again, awful. Um, 445 kilometer per hour speed isn't too bad with very good resilience, though. Uh, six available in B and eight in C. Also, these are technically South African. That's cool. And then we have British Mustangs, Mar Mustang Mark 3s with the 450 cows, 680 km per hour speed. These are going to be able to catch up to things very nicely, but probably more than likely just going to overshoot whatever they fire at because they only have 450 cows. If they had six, like the other Mustang variant, then they'd be in a much better place, but you're probably almost always going to overshoot things unless you bring in more than one. So, yeah, you have a lot of availability on them. You actually get eight availability. It's kind of crazy. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if these are going to be the most reliable. I think the Spitfire Mark 5C Trop, however, definitely will be because this is the Greek flown Spitfire that has 420 mil Hispanos. Now these things absolutely slap, and the the plane itself is very good. You get four in B and six in C. Yeah, very nice option for your air to air combat. Then there's another South African bomber, the Ventura again. It has this time the eight one hundred thirteen kilogram bombs, which is a much nicer payload. Um, obviously same stats el elsewhere. Uh, four available in B, seven available in C. Then we have the B26G25MA Marauder. And check out the payload on this bad boy. Two 907 kilogram bombs. Like that is that is some crazy stuff right there. Uh, you get two of them available in phase A. So this is pretty much Eugen asking you to nuke people in phase A. <laughs> Also, the the actual paint job looks really cool. Like, look at it. Very nice. I like this sort of, like, black color here. And you got the, the markings on the front there. Very, very nice. But yeah, two 907 kilogram bombs. Crazy. Then we have the Bowfighter Mark 10, which comes with the eight 150mm tank-busting rockets. These are pretty good, honestly. The bow fighters, these can kill things quite well. Um, same as like the Typhoons. The issue that you have with them, however, is that they're quite slow. And so AA tends to turn them around before they drop their payload. Um, because they're slow, they will hover over that AA for a long time and therefore get shot down as well. Uh, so that's kind of the issue you have there. And that's it. That's all of the units in this uh, division. So there you go. Nothing exciting in the defense tab. So we'll just go back to the main tab here and just build a deck. So I'm thinking you could probably go like Juggernaut with this if you wanted to, to make like a crazy infantry spam deck. But we're just probably going to keep it balanced for now. We'll jump into the recon. Uh, we'll definitely put in the blenders. We're going to grab all of this OP recon infantry. I'm probably just going to do one in A, B, and C. And I'm kind of tempted to bring in some like extra infantry in phase A for recon as well. But I'll come back to that later on. Um, in terms of infantry. I'm going to take pretty much every unique unit there is. So the Bombashi will bring in in phase A. We're going to bring in the Kasanti in phase A. 
and we're going to bring in the Jurishnitsi in phase A. So those are going to accompany each other. Then I'm going to use the American leader in A. And then we're going to bring in the Yugoslavian leader in phase B. Backing that up, we will have the Proletari. And then in phase C, we'll do more Proletari with some Pioneri, I think. I might grab some of these in B as well. And that will be my infantry for the entire game. I don't think these Borsi or Borsi, I don't know how that's pronounced, <laughs> um, are worth it in B. I mean, maybe you get 24. I mean, I could put these in C instead of the Proletari. Maybe it's worth taking the third card. Mm, we'll come back to it. All right, tank tab. Is it worth bringing any of this? I think I'm going to bring the S35s and the L6, but not the R35s. Because it's not worth a three-point card, no way. Definitely bringing in the MGs. I think bringing them in later on might be a better idea. The other thing I'm seeing here looking at this is I, I probably want some sort of line infantry in phase A. I think I'm going to add the Borshi or the Borsi in phase A just to back that up. That way I can almost definitely bring the MGs later on. Like having the a bunch of these late game could actually be pretty gross. I'm definitely bringing in the part up. <laughs> it's got to be done. And I think bringing in this infantry gun probably a good idea. Let's, uh, of course, get the commander in here. I think I'm actually going to move on, though. Because I need to leave space for supply. Definitely bringing in the pack 38s. Gonna bring in pack 40s in C. And I am tempted to bring in Piets, which is something I never thought I would say in the anti tank tab. We definitely need to bring in AA. When we bring in the AA, I'm not sure. I think we have to do it like this. We do like these in C in B and then like these in C so we can kind of like spam them out. Otherwise you just won't have enough. And in A you're just going to have to defend yourself with fighters. I'm going to bring these in A. I'm going to bring some mortars. And then maybe we could do some in C. But that would require me to actually bring in supply. Let's just kit out our air tab. Because I think we're going to have to do this, this. We're going to need the bow fighters. We're going to need the bombers. And then we're going to need fighters. I'm thinking... Probably bring in the mustangs. I'm going to up them in phase A. And then we bring in those Spitfires in B. Okay. Don't think these bombers are worth it. Bringing in a second card of both fighters would be nice. This is going to be nuts. Like, having to rely so much on this aircraft, <laughs> I don't even know how this is going to work. I 
I'm tempted to take out the infantry, the extra infantry here. Maybe do that. And that gives us enough to buy into. So I can definitely bring in phase C supply now. And we can bring in some more bow fighters. I think we'll do that. <laughs> this is looking ridiculous. Actually, ridiculous. <laughs> what a deck. Well, we'll see how it goes. I'll give it a go. This is probably going to change a lot, so do bear that in mind. Um, yeah, Nov, there you go. Um, it's going to be a tough division to play. It will be definitely very fun to play in 10v10s. In 1v1 it will struggle, probably, and in like team games like 2v2, 3v3, 4v4, it will probably struggle as well, um, unless you're up against another heavy infantry division, um, like, I don't know, Tartar Lake or Kuruk, something like that, something on the same sort of level on the Axis side. But at least, you know, those have things that are good about them. Well, maybe not Kuruk so much, but Tartar Lake has amazing artillery. I guess in some ways you could say that this has a decent air tab, which I think if utilized correctly, if you manage to get the 75 mils to pin down the enemy AA and then come in with like a load of bow fighters and hurricanes, you could probably wipe the floor with an like enemy armor. But it would have to be a, like Juggernaut. Um, it could also be like a V for victory. Because I don't really have many phase B units, but... I think you'd kind of overlap phase A and B quite a bit. So having V for victory, you might just lose in the early game if you do that. But yeah, anyway, that's where I'm going to leave it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed that look at the Nov division of the Yugoslavians. Um, next up, I'll be bringing you the other division from the Raid on Dravar Nemesis DLC. I think it's like Unternehmen Russelsplung or something like that. So, yeah, look forward to that. That's it. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Yeah,